For years, Merle Oberon kept one secret. Until, however, one of her siblings discovered a single document in the family papers that didn't just expose her. It could ruin her life. Heartbreaks, struggles, love affairs, and a dark secret that she tried to hide until the day she died. In her time on Earth, starlet Merle Oberon lived a thousand lives. Her devastating beauty propelled her to stardom, but the scandalous circumstances of her birth haunted her throughout her life. It was only after her death that her truth was finally exposed. Now Merle Oberon's affairs and relationships might have put Hollywood on notice during her adult life, but the starlet was quite literally born into a scandal. While Oberon's birth certificate lists Arthur, Terence O'Brien Thompson, and Charlotte Selby as her parents, in reality, the truth was much stranger and much darker. Oberon was born in 1911 in Bombay, British India, which is modern-day Mumbai, India. Oberon's father, Arthur Thompson, was a British mechanical engineer who worked for Indian Railways. Oberon's mother, Charlotte Selby, was from Ceylon, which is modern-day Sri Lanka, and was of mixed ancestry. Oberon's birth certificate hid a twisted secret. Charlotte Selby, the woman listed as her mother, was actually her grandmother. Charlotte's 12-year-old daughter, Constance, was Merle Oberon's real mother, and the starlet's real father is unknown to this day. However, in order to avoid public embarrassment, Charlotte put her own name on the birth certificate, and Oberon was raised to believe that she was Constance's sister. How did Charlotte Selby pass a baby off as her own when she already had a 12-year-old daughter? Even though you might think that Charlotte would have been too old to pull off the lie, you'd be wrong. Charlotte herself had been an incredibly young mother, giving birth to Constance at just 14 years of age. When Merle was born, Charlotte became a secret grandmother at only 26. Now young Merle was just three years old when the man she thought was her father, Arthur Thompson, died in World War I. He perished on the Western Front at the Battle of the Somme, but he didn't die in combat. He ended up dying of pneumonia in 1914. Thompson's death left Charlotte, Constance, and Merle alone and impoverished in Bombay until 1917, when it finally looked like their lives were turning around. They moved to Calcutta, where Oberon received a scholarship to attend one of the finest private schools in the city. It should have been a step towards a better life, but it was the beginning of a nightmare. Merle was relentlessly bullied at La Martiniere Calcutta School for Girls. They targeted her home life. She had no father anymore, and her single mother was poor. Kids always seem to know what will cut the deepest. These early years should have been some of the happiest of Merle's life, but the bullying became so bad that she couldn't bear to attend the private school any longer. Oberon dropped out of school and began homeschooling with her mother. Despite these setbacks, this difficult time had one enormous silver lining. This is where Oberon fell in love with performing. As a girl and into her teen years, Oberon went by the nickname Queenie. She was given it at birth, since her arrival on this planet coincided with Queen Mary and King George's 1911 visit to India. When Oberon was just 18 years old, she met a former actor named Colonel Ben Finney at a local restaurant and began dating him, but he would soon deal her a savage betrayal. When Finney went to visit Oberon's home and meet her mother for the first time, he broke up with her. The reason, you might ask? Oberon's mother was a woman of color. Despite this heinous rejection, Oberon stayed in contact with Finney, and it turns out this was definitely a good move for the aspiring actress. Finney knew the Irish director Rex Ingram, who was working out of the French film studio at the time. Finney suggested that Oberon go to France and meet the director and jumpstart her film career. It was a gamble, but it paid off in a big way. Oberon and her mother packed their bags and headed to France, they expected to immediately meet Ingram, however, he kept avoiding them in the beginning. Thankfully though, he eventually came around, hiring Oberon as an extra in a party scene for the film The Three Passions. However, it was hardly an overnight success of a young actress's dreams. Between 1928 and 1932, all Oberon's parts in films were uncredited. Now later in life, Oberon looked back on this time and remarked that she only began acting because she couldn't, quote, dance or sing or write or paint, quote. In her opinion, Oberon only had one thing to rely on, her extraordinarily beautiful face. Considering that she had moved to France specifically to meet a producer, 
This might have been an embellishment on her part. However, when Oberon met director and producer Alexander Korda, he gave her the world. Not only did the pair fall in love, but he cast her as Anne Boleyn in his 1932 film The Private Life of Henry VIII. Oberon co-starred with Hollywood heavyweights like Charles Lafton in the role of Henry VIII and Elsa Lanchester, the bride of Frankenstein herself, as Anne of Cleves. Oberon maintained a working and romantic relationship, although on and off, with Hollywood bigwig Alexander Korda for years. While she had a contract with Korda, her success made her an in-demand property. In a strategic move, Korda sold some of the shares of her name to Samuel Goldwyn, the legendary Hollywood studio executive, and after appearing in a number of British films, Merle Oberon became Hollywood royalty nearly overnight thanks to the contract legendary producer Samuel Goldwyn. She was just 24 when she appeared in the hit film The Dark Angel in 1935, which is about two male friends who fight for the heart of one woman. Not only did Dark Angel launch Oberon's career, it also skyrocketed her into cinema history as she netted an Oscar nomination for Best Actress. Now while in Hollywood, Oberon fell desperately in love with actor David Neven, with the two even becoming engaged. Overjoyed, Oberon announced that the pair were going to wed, but sadly, David would end up leaving her with a broken heart. After numerous affairs, David refused to change his ways and walk down the aisle, so the couple parted ways. Aside from her role as Anne Boleyn, Oberon portrayed a number of famous historical figures on film, including Empress Josephine, the woman who broke Napoleon's heart, and the writer and cross-dressing playwright George Sand. Oberon was supposed to work with both Corda and Charles Lafton again in 1937's I, Claudius, where she'd appear as Claudius' wife, Messalina, but the project was abruptly abandoned for an incredibly dark reason. After a terrible car accident, Oberon was far too injured, and some would say disfigured, to film anything. While I, Claudius, may have been cancelled, Oberon and film exec Alexander Korda weren't. The couple finally cemented their on and off relationship by tying the knot in 1939. And who could Oberon turn to in this trying time? Her beloved husband, of course. Alexander paid for his wife to go to New York City and receive first-rate cosmetic procedures that would help fix her damaged skin. They helped, and stage makeup was able to do the rest, but sadly, nothing could ever heal Oberon's scarred face completely. Oberon's own experiences with disfigurement were, in a strange way, part of what led her to find love. In 1941, while she was still married to Korda, Merle Oberon struck up a relationship with young Richard Hillary, a RAF fighter pilot. During his valiant actions at the Battle of Britain, Hillary sustained terrible burns that disfigured his face and deformed his hands into claws. Tragically, he died at just 23 years old. Oberon's affair with Hillary wasn't her only infidelity. Merle Oberon appeared in multiple films in 1934. Behind the scenes of the lead role in an adaption of the Scarlet Pimpernel, Oberon hid a dark secret. While making the film, she had an affair with her co-star, the British actor Leslie Howard. She also had an on-again, off-again relationship with none other than John Wayne a classic Western star between 1938 and 1947. Before Grace Kelly ever became princess, Oberon fulfilled an unbelievable rags to riches dream. In 1942, her husband, Alexander Korda, was knighted thanks to his part in the war effort. The honor transformed Merle Oberon, Hollywood star, into Lady Korda, esteemed aristocrat. But not even a fancy title could tie a lady like Merle down. Who's an actor's best friend? other than their makeup artist? Well, it's whoever's in charge of her lighting, of course. In 1944, cinematographer Lucien Bollard put together a small light that could be mounted on his camera specifically for Oberon. It provided an effect that washed away any blemishes or scars. What is now known as a catch light, it was originally nicknamed the Obi light, after, of course, Oberon. Lucien Bollard sounds like a pretty devoted cinematographer, doesn't he? While there may have been another reason for his intense involvement in inventing the famed Obi light, in 1945, Oberon divorced her longtime partner Alexander Korda and married her beloved cinematographer. Sadly, they were doomed to a sad end. The use of the light outlasted their relationship and they divorced in 1949. Now, backtracking to 1937, Oberon lost her mother, Charlotte Selby, 
who, as we know, was actually her grandmother. By this time, Oberon was in the dark secret of her parentage. But that doesn't mean that she didn't mourn the loss. In an utterly heartbreaking gesture, Oberon had portraits painted of Charlotte. She hung them in each of her homes. Due to how young her mother was when she was born and her Indian heritage, Merle Oberon spent most of her life obscuring the circumstances of her birth. It was only later in life that all her lies began to unravel. Now, while Oberon hid the fact that she was born in India, likely due to the racism in Hollywood at the time, it actually means that she had two unique distinctions. Not only was she the first woman of Asian descent to be nominated for Best Actress Oscar, she was also the first Asian nominated for any Academy Award. Now after her two relatively short marriages to Korda and Bollard, Oberon finally found love and built a family with an Italian businessman. They moved to Mexico, about 90 minutes south of Mexico City, and adopted two children. The starlet continued to make films during these years, but at a much slower rate. Now, the story that Oberon generally told about her birth was that she was born and raised in Tasmania, Australia, and if pressed for details, she would demur by claiming that her birth records have been destroyed. But as the years wore on, more and more people began to question her cover story, including the press, and even some members of her own family. Oberon visited Australia in 1965, and despite all her Hollywood training, she didn't exactly react in the most inconspicuous manner. When the press asked questions about her early life in Australia, Oberon would become nervous. And whether this was feigned or not, she became sick before her planned visit to Hobart, Tasmania, and flew back to Mexico immediately. In 1978, however, Oberon actually did visit Tasmania, and a ceremony was planned to honor their native daughter. But it couldn't have been more of a disaster. First, the mayor found out that she wasn't actually Australian, but it was too late to cancel the gala. Now he was ready to cover for her, but then Oberon's bizarre behavior caused the whole thing to unravel. When she got to the party, she actually began to deny that she'd been born in Tasmania at all. Instead, she made up a convoluted story about spending some years on the island after her father fell ill. Once again, perhaps realizing that she was in a tailspin of deception, Oberon panicked, said that she was sick, and left. The press hounded her, but she refused to answer any more questions. Did we mention that it was hard to tie Oberon down? After 15 years of marriage to the Italian businessman, she left him for a handsome Dutch actor that she met while making her final film, Interval. The relationship raised some eyebrows. The actor, Robert Wolders, was 25 years younger than Oberon, and later in life, Robert ended up as Audrey Hepburn's longtime partner. Oberon married Robert in 1975 and stayed with him until her death in 1979. She died of a stroke at 68 years old, because while Oberon sustained serious injuries from the 1937 crash, she was able to return to the screen the next year, but soon enough, her worst nightmare came true because in 1940, she found herself scarred from a combined cosmetic poisoning and an allergic reaction to a prescription drug. For a woman who told the press that her face launched her career, it must have been devastating. Oberon's mixed Indian background had long been a badly kept secret in Hollywood, but in the final years of Oberon's life, one of her family members worked to expose the truth about her parentage. After Oberon's birth, her biological mother, Constance went on to marry and have four legitimate children. All were told that Oberon was their aunt, despite the fact that she was actually their half-sister. And for one of those kids, the answer wasn't good enough. It was one of these half-siblings, Harry Selby, who found Oberon's real birth certificate in Bombay. It contained a jaw-dropping revelation. Oberon wasn't his aunt. She was his half-sister. After this discovery, Oberon dealt her own brother a heartbreaking betrayal. She refused to see him. He must have understood her wishes, because he didn't discuss the truth of her parentage until 2002, when he participated in a documentary about Oberon. And the story about the relationship between Constance Selby and Merle Oberon is even sadder and more disturbing. At just 12 years old, Constance was assaulted, which led to such a young pregnancy. And in case that wasn't disturbing enough, Charlotte, Merle's grandmother, who had given birth to Constance at just 14 years old, went through the exact same thing. Now what did you find most interesting about Merle Oberon's life? Was it the heartbreak, the love affairs, the dark childhood, or the struggles? 
Let us know down in the comments below. And if you're interested in more Hollywood scandals and life stories, make sure to subscribe to the Factonate YouTube channel.